Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Keynote was good, right? Was exciting. Um, welcome everyone here. And my name is Sohil. Uh, I'm going to do a session on using a chatbot with a Xamarin application. First, we'll go through the chatbot uh, in general and what is new there. And then we will go into the Xamarin and how it can help in your Xamarin application. Okay. So, MonkeyFest sponsored by Xamarinos, Infusion, Microsoft. Uh, so, I work here in Singapore. Um, currently, Microsoft MEP and uh, also do Xamarin stuff. I, uh, I'm also part of a community, Xamarin community here, the meetup. Uh, so, we do uh, this kind of uh, meeting meetups every month. Uh, if you are used to be used to be in here in Singapore, uh, if you are from here or if you are visiting here often, do check those uh, meetups we do every month as well. So you can take part on that as well. So what are we going to cover today is like I said, we'll first go through the bot framework and what is new in bot framework. Uh, then we'll speak about one of the channel which is direct line. Uh, which is used, which we will use them to uh, communicate with through mo mobile application through Xamarin, uh, and then we will see how it will help in building a Xamarin interface using chatbot. So, what's new in the? Uh, I would just like to know how many of you have used bot framework or tried before <coughs> bot framework, uh, heard of it. Okay, good. Uh, which means I can speak more. <laughs> uh, so, bot framework, usually um, the way we had earlier was the uh, app, app world where we have uh, app for everything and uh, literally app for like, it was just an app for everything. And then now we are moving towards the bot where um, everyone wants to have a bot for everything. So you have a bot for booking a pizza, uh, ordering a pizza, or bot for booking your flights, or uh, and th they are bot for everything now. Uh, that's where people are going now, and and uh, and that's where the AI comes into picture. So Microsoft uh, also launched Bot Framework, um, and Bot Framework is a cross-platform uh, SDK which you can use to create your own bots, your own chatbots. Uh, you can build your bots in either Node.js or on c -sharp, and you can host it on Azure. And uh, a SDK is available, and SDK makes a lot of things um, easy to build your bot. So all the technologies which, is, which has to do with uh, communication of the bot is covered by the bot framework. And you just have to build on top of that your functionalities. Uh, like for example, uh, under understanding, uh, okay. There's also another part on, uh, with the bot framework and the cognitive services is a Louis. Um, you guys know Louis is a language understanding, uh, I don't remember the full form, but it's a tool which understands you, uh, which helps you to uh, understand, does the language processing and gives you the result. Uh, so, for example, if your bot is doing, uh, if your bot is to book a flight, and uh, uh, so you you have two things. One is your methods, like for example, book a flight is one uh, functionality, and then you need a data for that, which is for example, source could be from Singapore, destination could be San Francisco. So, what Louis does is that if uh, the user types in book me a flight to San Francisco. Louis will uh, help you to understand the language and it will extract the two information. One is what the user wants to do and second, what is the data for this. So whether you have, so in this particular example, when the user says book me a flight to, uh, to Dubai, uh, <coughs> Louis will, uh, we can define the intents and entities and intents are like, for example, book a flight is an intent which is a method or a functionality, and Dubai is a destination. And this, once this is extracted, it makes you very, 
easy for you to build your functionality and give them the option that okay, these are the flights which we have. And then they choose the option and then you go with that. So, so that's a little bit on on the bot and the uh, and the new is what Microsoft used to have already. Uh, what's new in uh, in in bot framework is that now uh, Azure supports Azure Bot Service. So earlier what we used to do is we used to create a bot and then we used to host it on the bot service and then we need to uh, create a Lewis account and then uh, add the Lewis account to your bot and all of those steps are now uh, uh, now bundled up in Azure bot service and it makes very simple to set up a bot. Uh, I, will, I will go through this like what we will do is we will build a, a, bot, a bot and host it on Azure. Uh, we will connect it to Lois. We will do the uh, continuous integration, uh, whether you are using the Git or you are using uh, uh, VSTS, and then we will test and deploy. All of this step, we will do it uh, just now to see how quickly and how easy it is to set up a new bot. So I know most of you would be familiar with uh, uh, Azure portal. Mm -hmm. So here, if I click new, uh, I just need to say bot. So there's a bot service. And I will create a bot service. I will type a name, maybe uh, Okay, monkey fest IO. Uh, and once I select this, I just create it. And let's see what happens once you create this. Uh, and it's pretty combination of uh, what you used to do a lot of manual steps before. Everything is here automated, and we will just see in 10 minutes how to uh, build your boat, host it and deploy it all in just 10 minutes. Um, it's very powerful here. So while this is deploying, okay, it's deployed. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so since your bot framework need to, uh, sorry, uh, bot service needs to connect to Microsoft, uh, it will ask you and then you just follow the steps next 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 and it does everything for you so uh, let's say uh, I will just pick up a name I, I, it will do by itself yeah it did by itself I just have to just click next 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 and it does all by itself I have to copy this click OK finish and go back paste it. Uh, I can choose my language whether C sharp or Node.js. I will choose C sharp and here are the few templates of the already uh, the template to start the bot with. Uh, the very basic bot which will just have a communication model set up and uh, it will uh, uh, it will just have a communication model set up sending and receiving the messages. Uh, there's a form application, uh, form template, and then there's a uh, Lewis. If you want to do something on Lewis and do it to add the natural language processing in your bot, uh, that's the template to go with. Or if you want to just build a QNA uh, FAQ kind of uh, uh, bot builder, and this one is for Azure Functions. So I'll go ahead with uh, language understanding uh, Lewis template, and we will see how it goes. So create a bot, and it will connect me to Lewis. Uh, so otherwise, you have to create, go to the Lewis and create a new bot. Uh, what this will do is uh, go through your every step and does it all for you. Okay. It will get all the keys from from Louis to connect it and yeah we'll see how it goes so coming back to while, while this is done 
Uh, right now we are we did build uh, and host and between this build and host we are also connecting it to Lois. Uh, and then we will see how to enable the continuous integration. Uh, until here any questions about in general about the bot or bot framework? Yeah. And there was two templates, one was conversational, one was Luis. Yeah. Does the other one not work with language, or is it just... The conversation is uh, is the only basic template, which only, uh, there's only uh, the communication uh, model set up. It's just receiving and sending the messages. But it's it doesn't have added the Luis framework in it, and it doesn't have the connected to Luis uh, to get your uh, into so the Lewis framework, uh, Lewis template will have one class, uh, which will have an example. Of, I mean, so it will connect to your Lewis uh, app, and it will have one example of entity and intent uh, for you to start with, and then you can build on top of that your other entities or uh, intents, whatever you want. Okay. So does that mean the question answer one is more rigid? Question answer one is uh, more of like a FAQ. You you uh, you put in your questions and you have answers for that, and it will just search through those questions. Mm -hmm. It will still consider the uh, uh, the language processing, but uh, it's just for for the bot. If you want to build just like a FAQ kind of like for example, in a monkey fest, if you want to if you're building a monkey fest application and you have a separate section where uh, you can just ask the bot. Uh, when is the session on what, uh, or uh, uh, when is a session from Michael, or, or something like that, and then it searches through that and give you the answer, it's just for FAQ kind of thing. But if you are doing some kind of functionalities, like for example, um, help me book a cab or something like that, then it's more kind of like where you want to go through and define your own intents and and uh, and, and do the processing of entities on that. So, okay, so our board, board was just built and hosted here, uh, but we will go and do also continuous integration. And to do the continuous integration, uh, either you can, I mean, there are a few ways you can uh, either download the source code and then you have to again publish it, but that's not the cool way. But what I would uh, go is do with uh, Visual Studio Team Services and uh, I mean, you can use you can use GitHub or uh, SVN. I, I guess I've not used SVN, but uh, I'm sure it will support. Uh, but let's say I go to my uh, Visual Studio profile. Okay, here you go. Uh, so we just copy this, paste it here, um, let's try again. Just add new <coughs> access token. Uh, let's say same name. And you can define the scope uh, uh, if you want to give particular, not give all the permissions, but specific permissions. Uh, copy this. Okay, make sure it is copied. Uh, 
okay uh, here paste it enable so what this will do is that once the continuous integration is set up uh, you can just uh, connect it from your virtual studio to your board and as soon as you do any changes and as soon as you come into those changes your code will be directly deployed uh, to your board and you can straight away test it so it works very beautifully once it is set up um, we will see that so once this is done while this is completing i will show you the demo uh, so i have already done this uh, bot here and uh, what does this do is I won't go in much detail on the server side. We will focus on the Xamarin side of this uh, bot, but just to give you th that how does that template look like. So this is how it looks like. Uh, it has message controller, which has the ma uh, communication mechanism of sending and receiving the uh, your messages from the bot. Uh, and pretty standard, you don't need to do much here. If you want to handle few uh, system messages and like if you want to know when the bot is uh, you want to show to the user the bot is typing and stuff like that while you are doing some processing and stuff like you can do it here uh, but otherwise on the Lewis here is where you will get the uh, so let me just also show you how does the Lewis works uh, and by the way there is uh, the next session after lunch uh, same room is going to be more on the Lewis and uh, on the server side so how to set up your Lewis uh, and how to use it that's gonna be covering the entire server part server side part of uh, the chatbot uh, so if you are interested on that one do attend it this one uh, next after write this uh, uh, session so I have it here so uh, this is what we created just now from the Azure uh, portal and uh, this is the one I had earlier and and there are two things here important one is intents and one is entities intents are the ones which I said like a functionality so what functionality you want to do uh, in this example I'm using a to-do list so I'm, I'm trying to create a to-do list application a very simple to-do list where you um, let me just show you the to-do list application uh, So what I'm trying to do here is uh, just a simple to-do list. Uh, okay, and uh, and you add a new item in the list. Uh, for example, a reminder uh, and some text here. Uh, Okay, just a very simple to-do list. Um, so here, what I want to do is, if I want to use a bot uh, and and add some functionalities to the bot. So let's see if I click on the bot and um, oh well, okay. I need to run it again. Sorry about that. So I will run it again here. So we will do a demo. And what I want to do here is that I want to uh, the user instead of going in and clicking on new to-do list and typing in the title and, and 
uh, whatever their details. Instead of that, they can click on uh, what and they can write that uh, in, in a more uh, lang uh, human language. Uh, they can write something like create a, uh, a shopping list with uh, apples or add apple to my shopping list. And, uh, and then the, the Lewis, uh, I want to detect that and add it uh, into, the, into the bot. So to do that, what I want to do is that, um, for example, if the user wants to create a new node, uh, uh, and, uh, and the command be, could be like create a new node with, uh, uh, with this, this, for example, or add something to my shopping list. In that case, I want to create few intents. So there are two intents. One is add and create a new node, and another is uh, update the existing node, which is shopping list. So in that case, uh, I would define here on Lewis, I would define uh, two intents. One is add to node, and another one is node.create. Uh, and then there are a few others like note the clear confirm delete note reload show next whatever you can add numerous functionalities and you can add uh, uh, numerous commands for your application like show me next note uh, and delete the note saying shopping list uh, and, and what uh, there are a lot of things you can do and these are like uh, pre-built entities uh, intents so you don't need even need to create this intents in Lewis you already have a <coughs> lot of predefined and uh, intents like you have for example, your cal uh, your application has some calendar functionalities. There are intents uh, which are, for example, meetup. Uh, so meetup. Uh, dot com uh, or meetup app does a lot of calendaring. There are a lot of events and happening. If you want to do something like that, there are calendar related uh, intents which you can just add into your uh, Louis uh, camera related communication. There are a lot of uh, intents which you can use, uh, the general intents. So I've just uh, added two of them, which is add to note and create. And let's see how, how does that uh, work is, say if I click on bot and say uh, add apple to my shopping list and I say click OK. Uh, it will connect to Lewis, uh, does language understanding, process it, returns me the intents and entities, and then I will add it. Uh, let's see if it is detect or not. Uh, and yeah, so the apple is added there. Um, so that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and the beauty. Okay, so looks like our deployment is continuous integration is set up. Uh, we'll just check. Yeah, so continuous integration is set up. Um, we can test the bot from here uh, right away. If you want to test it, you can test it from here. But uh, the good thing is that uh, once this is done, you can download, you can connect to your uh, VSTS or whatever source control you're using. And from here, you can directly, uh, if let's say you made some some code changes here, so I'll just do some, I'll just add a line uh, just to show you. And then once I do commit, added line for demo. And commit all. Okay, uh, just we'll just sync it. Make sure. Okay, then uh, now let's go and see if it is getting deployed or not. So I'll go back to my bot, which is this one. Let's check the continuous the deployments and there should be a deployment going on so this one which we added line for demo is building and once it is very well 
deploy it. Uh, and and so we this what we did here. Uh, so what we did here is we we built and hosted it on on uh, Azure in the bot. Uh, we connected it to Lois. We enabled the continuous integration, and we deployed it. So all of this stuff uh, in just very uh, few minutes. So yeah, it's done. So the code is deployed, and then you can straight away test it from here. Uh, like for example, add Apple to my. list and uh, I should reply with, uh, with giving me that uh, I want to add an apple um, we'll see how it goes and then other than that okay, let me retry so there are a lot of channels also and you can connect to uh, you can directly connect it to your Skype, uh, publish it to Skype or Messenger, Telegram, uh, Skype for Business, Teams. There are a lot of uh, channels here, but all of these channels are not right now in our interest for this uh, session. Uh, what we are more interested in, so here it replied me with Apple, which means it was able to detect that I want to add Apple to the list. Uh, I haven't uh, formatted the text here, but uh, yeah, just just to show you the demo. Um, so one, so this is all, uh, if you want to publish your app on, uh, I mean your bot to Skype, you just enable that, and and that's it. Once that is enabled, you just uh, click on Skype and and you get the link. You can also publish it right away from here, uh, and there are more a lot of channels which you can publish to, uh, including the Skype for Business and Teams and. Uh, I guess there was also, uh, yeah, also the web chat. If you want to integrate it in your in your website, that uh, there is also a, a web chat um, inbuilt. So you just have to include it in your in your iframe in your website, and uh, uh, this is what is uh, the iframe looks like. So this exact uh, exact uh, iframe, you can embed it in your website anywhere you want it um, okay any questions so far Yeah, I mean, I can still do those. Under the app service. Yeah, under the settings. 
Any other question? Yeah. So I saw you create a new intent and you mm -hmm. just kind of give the intent a name. Okay. How do you wire that up to specific phrases or ways of doing uh, things? So okay. you wanted to delete, not just delete, but delete all completed items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is more on how you define your Lewis. Uh, so if I go here, let's say for example, this is add to note and uh, here it will give me some addresses. So few of the phrases are like add a note to and then the text. Uh, and, and you can add your own notes here. So you can type here, like for example, uh, link me to new note or, or any text you want uh, and then you can define that okay this new note means adding a new note uh, or intent uh, i mean this okay this I mean you can you can say that okay link me to a new note means uh, that user wants to add in to a note so this is what is the intent uh, and there is no entities here because the user didn't mention what data he wants to add he just want to create a new node uh, and you can define uh, you can select train all of this uh, specifically like for example uh, if the Lewis detected this wrongly uh, you can just change it and select that this is not actually the text but it is a title or it is uh, contact name or app name whatever you want and then once you do this you save it and once you save you can then uh, train and you can train and publish so whatever changes you have made you have training uh, the more you train the bot the more it will recognize your players so you can uh, keep on uh, i mean you can uh, so all the conversation also all the queries which are sent by the uh, by users on the bot are also uh, 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 are also listed on, on the bot on the Lewis. So uh, the more you go into it and more you train it, the more it will get better. And then you can then deploy it, train it and deploy, it, train it and deploy, it, and then it will get more and more uh, relevant. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to cover most on the Lewis because the next session is going to be specifically on Lewis and on the server side. Uh, but uh, let's go and see okay so here we are so we uh, we deployed it uh, and uh, enabled the continuous integration uh, this is what we saw web chat client uh, and few other channels but what we are specific uh, more interested into is the direct line uh, so direct line for example so there are two channels like uh, skype skype for business telegram uh, cortana is one of them and there are a few more but if you want to add uh, the bot capabilities in your app itself then uh, there's a direct line api uh, which are rest based API. Uh, they are available in REST based uh, or you can do it via WebSocket. Uh, and that is what we will use it to enable it from a Xamarin application. So the way it works is that uh, it's just an overview that we registered it on the Azure bot portal and then we enable the channels and few of them channels like Cortana, Facebook, as uh, Skype and if you want to integrate in your bot then the direct line api and yeah from direct line you can use the direct line api connect it from your app uh, and then it goes to your bot uh, we will see that in a while so what we are what we will do here is uh, so on a on a bot we have all those logic of whether we want to do uh, add to the uh, note or create a new note, uh, whatever we want to do, those are the business logic there. Then we use the direct line API from our Xamarin application. So let's see how does that goes. Uh, so 
So this is the bot on the server side. I will just close this because we are done with this. Uh, okay. So here I have a to-do list and what I'm trying to do here is uh, so apparently this this uh, SDK is not available for Xamarin forms so what I have done here is uh, created a dependency service uh, and this is the uh, this is the need to get package which you need to install Microsoft bot, bot dot connect dot direct line and this one also Microsoft dot rest dot client runtime uh, once you add that uh, I've created a dependency service and what it does is basically just a connection code so it uh, it creates a new client and with the AP uh, with the key the key I get it from my uh, Azure portal uh, so let me just show you that so on Azure portal, I have here the direct line as a channel. And uh, once I enable the direct line channel, I can get the key. So secret keys here. Um, I, uh, I get that keys, uh, add it here. And then pretty much this is the default, like kind of a template code. Uh, you, you can define the, the username from where the query is coming from. Uh, and, and then it's just authenticating uh, and uh, get message so there are two mess two functions here uh, important one is uh, sending and another is getting message so send message and get message that's what you want to do uh, only so you send a message whatever is processed on a server and then the server replies to you and you get that message uh, so these are the two things only you need i mean you can do the more you can add an attachments and stuff like that uh, but for simple, uh, we'll just see these two methods. And then from Xamarin Forms application, I'm just passing those query which we return uh, to the send message and getting the reply and processing it and adding it there. So that's what we sh we saw a demo here that when I say add, app, when I write it on there, add Apple to my shopping list, uh, it detects it and then it adds it there. But uh, that's that is that is not that cool what would be more cooler is that uh, if we add a speech recognition uh, and do the text to sp uh, I mean speech to text sorry not text to speech uh, yeah I mean speech to text uh, and the text to speech uh, both and use that in our application so my uh, my, my goal here on, on this topic is to uh, the topic of the uh, the title of the topic is to add a conversational interface, uh, which means how you cannot use the the predefined like buttons and and text and stuff like that. Instead of that, why how you can use uh, make the more human conversation with your bot. So we will just see we'll just see the demo for that first. And then we will see how does that work. So, I'll just deploy it and you should see that coming up. So what we want to do here is instead of writing it, uh, how about we record the audio uh, and then send that audio to Bing Speech API. So I'm using a Bing Speech API to do uh, speech to text. And then that text will be uh, passed to bot, and bot will pass it to Lewis to do the language understanding, and then process the result. So same thing. Uh, bear with me, uh, I'm not, the UI is not updating when I'm uh, recording it. So you won't see any UI magic that it is recording or something, but it is recording so let me just go ahead and do that add apple to my shopping list
Okay, I don't know why this is. Okay, I think that the cable was not connected properly. Okay, let's run it again. We did it that. Okay, it's deploying. Okay, coming up. Okay, here we go. By the way, if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, okay, so let's see. Add Apple to my shopping list. And this should record an audio and then it will follow Bing Speech API to uh, get the speech to text. And yeah, there you go. The Apple is added. Uh, or I can say, Note to self, buy milk. And yeah, yeah, that's it. So, I mean, yeah, of course, we can. I can modify the UI and have a microphone there instead of that, and then do some fancy stuff of listening and, and uh, change the UI. But the thing is that. Uh, you can do this to any application. If your application is to, uh, is for example, media application where you're play, playing uh, uh, videos or anything, you can just have like uh, this kind of button when you say play music from this, this album. Or literally any application, you can uh, leverage this kind of functionality. So the basic goal is that you uh, enable a more conversational interface uh, and um, you will still have your own UI and everything, but this is just an additional uh, functionality which you can enable and let it uh, let the user speak to your uh, app application instead of interacting through the normal way. Um, so what I have done here for that is I've just used the recorder, audio recorder, uh, and after recording it, I've called the Bing Speech API. Um, and Bing Speech API returns me the the, uh, the result of the recorded from speech to text, and and then I use that. And then in, uh, after I recognize and everything, I can st uh, again use uh, text to speech to give a commands like, for example, uh, okay, your your item is added or new list created, something like that, uh, and and it would be more conversational than uh, the more. So one more additional step to this would be, so you see here in the channels, uh, there's one channel called Cortana. So Cortana is also one of the channels in the chat. Uh, what you can do here is that if you enable this uh, channel, uh, instead of doing it from your app itself, you can open up the Cortana from here and just speak to Cortana and say that uh, add Apple to my shopping list, or for example, your app is for whatever. Uh, your app is, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, to book a flight. Then you can just say, uh, book me a flight to San Francisco on this app, and then it will detect this app, uh, and it will open your app, and you can show the flights there directly. So that would be cool. cool. Uh, or you can also use. Uh, so since the, it is uh, published on, it is published on. Cortana, you can also use those uh, Cortana speakers uh, like Amazon and Alexa, uh, the, the Harman uh, uh, Cortana speaker, and you can speak directly to Cortana and ask uh, for the information from your app or add a functionality in your app or do whatever you want. So that's 
So this just uh, a quick uh, look at how you can enable completely s different set of functionalities, uh, different way of interface in your uh, existing functionalities in your application and make it more cooler. Right. Yeah. So I guess that is it. Yeah, so the summary is, yeah, we, we leverage this, uh, the speech capabilities in our Xamarin apps. Uh, we can build on top of natural language understanding on Lewis and Bing speech API um, and, and enable those functionalities. Yeah. Any question? Yeah. There are two ways. So for Xamarin, we're uh, using the uh, REST service. Uh, web socket, you may use it for, for web. For Xamarin, Xamarin, and REST OK. So another you know, question, just now you have to go to the call, right? How you know how the call is going when, when you stop? You are not covering your your finish. So, uh, to record an audio, uh, there's one plugin in, in Xamarin Forms. Uh, it's called Xamarin Recorder, uh, which, uh, which has a functionality that it stops recording if it gets to second of silence. But, but can people go? Yeah, it is not good. So, but I'm not using that plugin, but there was somehow that plugin did work for me, and I created my own. So there are a few languages already supported. Uh, I don't remember the exact list, but uh, there are quite of them. So Bing Speech API is the same, which is used by Cortana. 
So the same framework, uh, the, uh, the cognitive services, which is used by Cortana. So if Cortana is able to understand it, Bing Speech API will understand it. So bot framework is different than Bing Speech API. The bot framework, uh, first we are passing it to the Bing Speech API, and I'm doing it in a way that I record the audio on the phone, and then I call the Bing Speech API from the phone and get the text and then pass it to the bot. You can do the other way is that you can pass the audio file as an attachment to the bot itself, and then from bot service, you call the Bing Speech API and do your stuff. So, let me see. There. Yeah, but there are quite a few languages which are supported, I remember. Yeah, so these are all the languages uh, for Singapore. Yeah, there's Chinese Mandarin simplified, Chinese Hong Kong, Chinese Taiwanese. Yeah. 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 Uh, pretty much all these capabilities are online only. Uh, is there a way to sort of embed it within the native app with a desktop or mobile? So, for example, like you say, uh, add, milk, uh, add apple to my list. Does it have to go uh, back to all these services, uh, do the processing, or can some of these capabilities be done in the um, if, if it is very simple stuff, like we can do some kind of uh, level of expression checks in your input. So, first, when you, when the user uh, does some input, you can do the like, uh, level of expression and check some keywords that which are very obvious like add to uh, or create new or something like that. Um, and you can do some kind of offline this, but uh, language understanding is a big topic. And, uh, and, and you won't get a very good result if you do it offline. So you can do a very limited amount like, uh, if there are, like very specific words which you can recognize uh, on the client side, but that would not be kind of a uh, any using any uh, machine learning or anything, it would be just kind of like a detecting uh, the two very uh, expression or something like that. So, but yeah, if you want to have a the embedded language understanding, then that would be a very good use of machine learning. But what if uh, there's a native API, let's say uh, Bing Please do attend that one also if you want to know more about the server side. Okay, so thank you.